dry up. That was obviously an impressive finish, but it wasn't easy. I mean, he came at you hard in the first round. You know, what was it about that the particular time? Like, uh, what did it, what did it take such a long time to get that finish? What was it about his stud? You know, um, the, the kid is a stud, first of all. Uh, he came at me with a lot of unorthodox strikes. For me personally, I decided to do the rope dope but I decided to do that around, I believe, midway throughout the second fight. I was like, he's hitting me with everything hard. He's hurting me, but I've noticed he's getting tired. So if I can dictate the fight by pressing a little bit, it would create an opening. And the third round, um, you know, I did that and it happened. But even prior to that, he was really good. I just couldn't find the footing. My rhythm was off. I was like, what's going on with my footing and everything? But, you know, I, I, the rope dope worked a little bit and I just kind of went off of it. And you must have been feeling some sense of urgency going into that third round because, I mean, like you said, in the study, he was coming at you hard. Yeah, there was definitely an urgency. I heard my coaches yelling at me, but, you know, I had some demons in my head, some personal stuff that was going on, and my hand was under gun, but for some reason I couldn't pull the trigger. I, I felt like I needed to press forward to pull that trigger. And once it ha happened, it happened so fast, I was like, oh, crap, it worked. And I just jumped on him, but they stopped it. Were you surprised how far he came out right away? Because as a young kid, you know, probably coming in, you know, there's some, there's some tough hitters, and he was kind of right in your face right away. Oh, it was expected, man. Listen, you go up against a guy like me, they call me a veteran, all that stuff. It was expected. If you can take my confidence away, and we all know in fighting, it's all about that mindset. He was trying to do that. Um, he did first couple of minutes, and I was like, wow, this kid is actually really good. Couldn't really find anything, but I was still trying to look for something. But what I did see is he's getting a little nervous when it wasn't working. So I just waited for that right moment, and it happened. Is, is that patience a, a relatively new thing for you? Is that something that, because I mean, when you came into the game, of course, we all know about your skills and everything, but right. that veteran has kind of gained the ship, that veteran ship. Is that something you kind of has come recently? Not exactly. The game is changing, you know. Um, you look at when uh, Amanda fought Ronda. You know, Ronda was dominating everyone, but no one was on Ronda's level. And then people started to catch up. And then when Amanda decided to jump in on that, you saw the difference. And not to take anything away from Ronda, she's one of the best to ever do what she does. But people like me, you have up-and-comers that are constantly growing. The sports is changing. It's constantly evolving. So, you know, I have my patience because I'm, I'm a martial artist and I have a karate background. But sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good to wait too long. But for me, it was always that articulate patience, timing to take away that, uh, uh, to, 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 to create an opening to pretty much exploit it, basically. Did you see that he was doing that, that kind of left over that counter, that right hand? You know, he would swing that right hand, and I was like, I just got to time that right hand. I got to time that right hand. But as I was going back, he was throwing it. And I worked a lot of balance techniques. You know, for me, I, wish I work on throwing any technique from off balance. That way, I can still keep my power. And I have my coach, John Walker, to thank for that. I, I moved back at a certain angle. And as I was coming back, my force was still generated properly. And I didn't think I would hurt him that much because he was out. So. I was almost kind of scary. His eyes were I was, scary. yeah, it was a little, I had a moment again. I was like, oh, crap, what did I do? You had a moment afterwards where you walked over to the cage immediately after and you could see a lot of emotion on your face. And you talked a little bit in your post-fight speech, or was it more about just being able to deal with the adversity in that particular fight and you It was definitely adversity, man. Between the, you know, the hiccup that happened this week, um, I, you know, I, I became a professional about it. You know, it happens. I said, you know what? In the sport of mixed martial arts, something's gonna go wrong that you don't expect. So, I have to readjust. You know, if someone's outboxing me, maybe I should take him down or kick him in the leg. But you know, I was going through some personal stuff with families, and when that happened, I, it just came out because I was fighting for more than myself, you know, I was fighting for my sister, I was fighting for my mom, you know, I, I didn't talk about it because I didn't want to, I didn't want any sympathy, you know, I, I knew what I had to do and I used it motivation. My sister wrote a song called Keep Standing, that's why I walked out to it, and she said she was inspired to write that song when I broke my toe, but the funny thing is I'm inspired by that song to fight, so it worked so perfectly for us, and, you know, she accomplished so much in her life, she was married with kids, and, We've seen people that go through depression, like someone like Wyvern Williams, where you've never thought in a million years someone like that who's so happy. And when something like that happened, I'm like, oh, that sucks. But when it's happening to someone I care about, it was like, wow, it's really real. And people are really going through this. So when I saw my sister was going through that, I felt like 
I had to be some kind of positive reinforcement to let her know that, hey, I failed so much in probably the biggest stage in the world, and everyone gets to see me do it. You know, not everyone gets to see people fail, but everyone gets to see me do it. So if everyone sees me do it and I keep standing, it's a reminder to say, hey, you got to keep standing too, because I haven't figured out a way how to quit. Did you uh, have a chance to talk to your sister after the I haven't spoken to her yet. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> she's a stud, man. I, I love her yeah, so much. Um, I haven't got a chance to spoke, speak to her yet, but I did tell her I'm going to walk out to her song, and she was extremely happy and excited about it. So any form of positive reinforcement I can be to her, I'm at her service. Is she back in New York? Yes, yeah, she lives in New York City, yeah. Did something happen in her life that, that had this or I mean, I don't want to go too much in detail, but I, I personally think for most people, and I don't know who in here can relate to it, there's going to come a point where you either want to stop, quit. I know I've been there thousands of times, whether you guys are reporting journalists and other people in your ear, or if you've fallen or failed, you, it's going to happen. And you either have that choice to say, okay, I can keep fighting, or I'm done with this and move on. And I felt for her, being that she was always so successful, maybe she probably couldn't handle that loss of certain things in her life that wasn't going so well, whether it's you know going through a divorce, losing her business, and it happens, man. It happens in life. You know, you're not always gonna succeed at everything, but the idea is to say, okay, what can I take from it and move forward? So I think not having the right support system, that's when most people fail and fall. And when I heard about her situation, I know how delicate it was. So I don't wanna not be there and hear some bad news. So I decided to be there as much as I can. That's your, uh, next game plan. I'm sorry? That's your next game plan to get that. Yeah. Um, chill and eat. You know, my buddy Kelvin is up. Um, I've been training with him uh, at King's MMA. I decided to make a change. Uh, I'm heading back out there to spar and probably not a good idea, but I'm heading back out there to train with him. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's up. Right now I'm just chilling, man. I'm glad I ended the year with a better bang than the last fight. But um, in the sports and mixed martial arts, it's all about growing. You know, you, you, you get knocked down. For me as a professional, it's like, what did I do wrong? How can I resuscitate and just get better? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Can you sing a song for us? What? <laughs> I can't sing a song right now. I can do voiceovers, but I can't sing. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys.